Hello. Hello, Team Hollywood. Whoop, whoop. Are you going to say hello at any point? Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. Good morning. You are joining us on a very sunny day here on planet Earth. Sunny? Welcome. I, don't know, I could think I could have said any kind of weather and you would have argued with me. Right. Let's, let's try again. Let's <laughs> see what happens. No. No, let's uh, try it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Welcome to the very first Hollywood Happy Hour podcast. It doesn't get more exciting than this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Now, the name has upset my co-host because, as I'm sure you've noticed from looking at this podcast, it's not actually an hour. But I love alliteration and I just couldn't resist the triple H. She's an English teacher. <laughs> Stop whispering into the into the microphone. So That wasn't a whisper. Let's start with some introductions. We, as in there are two of us here, are going to be your podcast hosts for the Hollywood Happy Hour. Triple H. I am Mrs. Wilshire teaches English. Bit of a legend, that's what I've heard. Um, but from now on, you can call me Napoleon. And I'm Miss Wilshire, and I teach music. And for the purposes of this podcast, you can call me Nightingale. <laughs> like now, the nurse or the bird. The purpose of this podcast is to, and it's going to be once a week, particularly while we are in lockdown and we are not at school, it's an opportunity for us to link together as a community, as the Team Hollywood brand that we all are part of. Team Hollywood, woo <laughs> It's an opportunity to Hashtag give us... Team Hollywood. ...to give us that link. So it's to give you a link to us, and it's to give us a link to you, because we're really hoping that some of you are going to get in touch. Because um, we miss you guys. It's... It, 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 the school is, is... There's tumbleweeds all over the place, you know? <laughs> but some of the exciting segments that we will be having coming up... <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that can't see, Nightingale is just getting further and further away with the recorder. Okay, I'll try and be careful. Yeah, you said this last time. But some of the exciting segments that you can look forward to in this and future pods are This Week in History, Geographical Facts, Cultures from Around the World, which is one of my favourite segments, in um, tr- Interesting Customs from Around the World, Interesting Customs from Around the World, Short Stories with our secret correspondent Nefertiti, po- Positivity. Rocking at the Rude. Rocking at the Rude is going to be awesome. <laughs> it's my favourite bit. It's my favourite bit. Um, we've got students providing us with a joke of the pod. Uh, what have you done this week to make you feel proud? And as many student and staff shout outs as we can possibly cram in to each week. Oh, and uh, an inspirational quote by our students. Which is very exciting. It is. Yes. And this is all while we are in the fight against Corona. The fight against Corona. But we won't be calling it Corona because I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. You are. And the idea for this podcast originally was based on the uh, Potter watch in the seventh book when everyone's gone underground and they're trying to fight he who must not be named. And so we... See who must not be named. Exactly. (gasps) Does this make us a quarantine? Get it? Quarantine? Quarantine? Team? We are a team? That's bad. Uh, Oh, I was going to get it printed on a t-shirt. It doesn't just stop there. You can also see us on the Facebook page and Twitter. We are going. Hashtag viral. Wow, that was loud. Hashtag viral. Oh, nice. Hashtag viral. Hashtag viral. Okay, right, stop. Okay, without further ado, let's crack on with the show onto our first segment, This Week in History. Yo, a lady's got a whole lot of history. You're not supposed to sing the jingle. I'm going to put the jingle in for you. I thought we couldn't afford one direction. No, but it's fine. As long as it's in like 10 seconds of oh, one direction, we're okay. okay. We're going to go over to um, our first ever podcast, Hollywood Happy Hour podcast correspondent. 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 I really am filled with the urge to go, everyone give it up for America's favourite fighting Frenchman. Lafayette. We're, we're, not, we're not calling Mr. Taser Lafayette. Ma- do you know what? My year eight did a really good job of rapping Hamilton. I can imagine. They I, were amazing. I'm so good. I'm taking this horse by the red coat, making red coat spread with a blood I mean, stain. My, my, and I'm never going to stop until I make a drop of scattered that remains. My tiny Napoleon, my mini Napoleon, is, is obsessed with Hamilton. She's very good. Yeah, she's good. I would like to introduce Mr. Tozer. I'm going to say we let him choose his own code name, but actually we chose it for him because we got very excited. Yeah, we did. So we are going to hand you over. For two very different reasons. <laughs> We're going to hand you over to Mr. Tozer, who will now henceforth forever and, uh, and ever be known as Nero. Like the coffee. 
like the Roman emperor. So I got excited because I thought we were naming him after the type of coffee that, although, are we allowed to brand other, coffee? Other, other coffee brands types are available. Are available. Um, and that's then where Napoleon and Nightingale came from because we got to Nero first and then yeah. said, well, we all have to begin with N. So, without further ado, welcome to Mr. Toza. Mr. Toza 2, Nero. the very first Hollywood happy hour. Well, this week in history is not a particularly good week for the Tudors. Oh, is, is it ever? Not really, but it's even worse in this case. Uh, on the 5th of January, 1531. Today? Today, this very day, Henry VIII is uh, not granted his divorce from his first wife. His first wife, who is who, listeners? Catherine of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon! Oh, can you get a sex in here? You know, the divorce. Beheaded. Died. Divorced. Beheaded. Died. Divorced. Beheaded. Survived. Oh yes, because yeah, it gets even worse because tomorrow, the sixth of January, the sixth of January, See, I'm keeping up, 1540, he marries his fourth wife. Oh, Ooh. different years. Oh yeah, different years. Well, I mean it's Henry VIII, so but it's still the same one. Wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Uh, divorce, married, died, divorce. Uh, is that Anne of Cleves? That is Anne of Cleves. Winner. I can literally feel like you guys are just history nerding out right now. Well, I did warn you. Yeah, it's cool. It's fine. I'm, I'm just over here. My mum is. You can, you're free to guess. Yeah, I can, I'll guess. Okay, here you go then. How long was she actually queen for? I don't know. Twenty years. Twenty. Twenty years. Six months. Ooh, oh, I didn't know she that's lasted very that short. long. She lasted six months as be- queen. As queen. That's that face. Almost as long With as that how face. many inches With that tall I am. That's almost as long as how many inches tall you are. Six, you're six months tall. Yes. I don't think. I probably won't put that bit in. <laughs> and that is, it's still not a good week because uh, after Henry's uh, untimely death from being overweight, his... Uh, and gross. Did he gout quite a lot? You gout, did, yeah. Um, gout, uh, blisters everywhere. Oh, he had like Wasn't he very... Did I, did I, did I, uh, was it a horrible history maybe that um, said that he was just a very smelly man? Should we maybe yeah. have given out a warning that listeners should not be listening to this whilst trying to eat their breakfast? <laughs> Well, yes, probably. Too late. I mean, normally it doesn't go this gory and blistery and well, pussy. Yeah, but now we've got Nap- uh, no, Nero. Know. Now we've got Nero doing it. Right. To be fair, anybody who has any history knows that history is violent. It is. Yeah. I mean, that's why horrible history was created. The same. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Mary Tudor. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, as she will be forever known. Having killed three hundred Protestants, <laughs> also. Lost uh, the last bit of English land in France. Oh, she, she lost Calais. She lost Calais. She that is uh, on the seventh of January. <sighs> Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Thank you so much, Nero. We You're look welcome. forward to. Um, I think maybe the challenge for next week would be to find a little bit more fluffy history, just to kind of you know sandwich out the gore, maybe. Thank you, Nero, Ooh. and good night. Section two: weekly fun fact. Did you know, fun fact, you can hear a blue whale's heartbeat from more than two miles away. Wow, that is pretty cool. Two miles. A whale was like, hello. No. (laughs) Can you help us find the sign? (laughs) The blue whale's heart weighs about 400 pounds, which is approximately the size of a small piano. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's big. I can fit inside a piano, you know. Yeah, but you're really small. We're going to have various different sections. At the moment, obviously, while we're uh, still in our... Um, fledgling. Fledgling, that's, that's the word I was looking for. Whilst we're in our fledgling uh, stage... Um, we are sort of fine-tuning various bits and bobs. If you have any ideas of things that you would like to hear in this podcast, please do email with your uh, requests and we will make it happen if we can. We're hoping every episode... Is it an episode? Yeah, sure. Every episode, we're hoping to encourage 
a member of staff from a different department to come in and chat to us about what students are going to be working on in their department this week. Maybe offer some top tips, extra stuff that you could do, particularly if, say, you really love history. Other things that you could be doing as a, as a supplement. Uh, loads of exciting stuff like that. Obviously, we haven't managed that today. Um, but instead, today, for one show only, we are going to have a special medical correspondent come in and chat to us quickly about why it's important that we wash our hands. Hello, okay, so yeah, my name is Dan. Uh, I am an advanced uh, clinical practitioner and paramedic currently working at the Musgrove Hospital's A&E department throughout a corona crisis, if uh, you like. We're calling it See Who Must Not Be Named. See Who Must Be Named. Oh, that's very clever, yes. Um, like Voldemort. Like Voldemort. Ah, he who must not be named. No, sorry. oh, there's he's and he's and everyone that can't be named. Um, you can name me there, yeah? Uh, so, where were we? Oh, it's hand washing. So the importance of hand washing. Uh, I mean, it's always important to wash your hands anyway, uh, but particularly more so uh, now, uh, given how many times we like to touch our face, uh, just for example. So, uh, what uh, we within the NHS recommend is that you wash your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds and more often than you would do. Um, so, not just after going to the loo, before you eat, but when you get home from being out, if you've been out or um, if you've... Uh, handle post things like that um, the best way to wash your hands uh, properly using normal soap uh, is to get your hands wet uh, put the soap in the middle of your hands and then you can't see my gestures now which is um, a shame uh, but you rub your hands together palms together and then interlace your fingers rotate your hands so then you do the top swapping over interlacing your fingers till then you rotate through your thumbs and then just rub the palms of your hands rinse your hands with warm water and then dry them. That's the important thing is to dry your hands as well. Uh, once you're done, you might find that you start to get quite sore hands, so it's perfectly acceptable uh, to use um, like a, a moisturiser or something on your hands afterwards um, uh, to sort of protect the skin as well, because you will, uh, throughout this washing process, take off the natural layers of oil and protection from your skin, and you don't want to end up with a condition called contact dermatitis, which is actually quite painful. Um, so yeah, I'll be sort of dropping in on these podcasts periodically with little medical snippets and updates and uh, ways to keep yourself uh, healthy throughout the uh, See Who Shall Not Be Named crisis. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Woohoo! Oh, he's so good. We like our well, medical... I think he might medical. actually be a serious medical professional. He's definitely a serious medical professional, I know. So we now are introducing a really exciting new segment that's not a segment of Chocolate Orange to the Hollywood Happy Hour, the HHH. <laughs> uh, we have got an English correspondent, correspondent codename Nefertiti, but it's actually Miss Smith in disguise. <laughs> Round of applause for Miss Smith. Welcome to the Hollywood Happy Hour, Miss Smith. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, now, Miss Smith, um, as Team English, is going to, once a week, read a short story for us and our listeners, which we're very excited about. And, just to bring the drums, Miss Smith is going to be doing it in two parts. So we're going to get the first part now. I have specified that I do want these short stories to be exciting, preferably with some kind of twist, or um, a cliffhanger, maybe. Yeah. Something exciting. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, this is Nefertiti with our first short story. Lambs to the Slaughter by Roald Dahl. The room was warm, the curtains were closed. The two table lamps were lit. On the cupboard behind her there were two glasses and some drinks. Mary Maloney was waiting for her husband to come home from work. Now and again she glanced at the clock, but without anxiety. She merely wanted to satisfy herself with each minute that went by, made it nearer to the time that he would come home. As she bent over her sewing, she was curiously peaceful. This was her sixth month expecting a child. Her mouth and her eyes, with her new calm look, seemed larger and darker than before. When the clock said ten minutes to five, she began to listen. A few minutes later, Punctually, punctually as always, she heard the car tyres from the stones outside. The car doors closing, footsteps passing the window, the key turning in the lock. She stood up and went forward to kiss him as he entered. Hello, darling, she said. Hello, he answered. She took off his coat and hung it up. Then she made the drinks, a strong one for him and a weak one for herself. And soon she was back again in her chair with her sewing and he was in the other chair, holding the tall glass, rolling it gently, as the ice knocked musically against the side of the glass. For her, this was always a wonderful time of the day. 
She knew he didn't want to speak much until his first drink was finished, and she was satisfied to sit quietly, enjoying his company after the long hours alone in the house. She loved the warmth that came out of him when they were alone together. She loved the shape of his mouth, and especially liked the way he didn't complain about being tired. Tired, darling? Yes, he sighed. I'm thoroughly exhausted. As he spoke, he did an unusual thing. He lifted his glass and drank it down in one swallow. Although there still was half of it left, he got up and went slowly to get himself another drink. I'll get it, she cried, jumping up. Sit down, he said. When he came back, she noticed that the new drink was a very strong one. She watched him as he began to drink. I think it's a shame, she said, that when someone's been a policeman for as long as you have, he still has to walk around all day long. He didn't answer. Darling, she said, if you're too tired to eat out tonight, as we had planned, I can fix something. There's plenty of meat and stuff in the freezer. Her eyes waited to an answer, a smile and nod, but he made no sign. Anyway, she went on, I'll get you some bread and cheese. I don't want it, he said. She moved uneasily in her chair. But you have to have supper. I can easily fix something for you. I'd like to do it. We can have lamb, anything you want, anything in the freezer. Everything's in the freezer. Forget it, he said. But darling, you have to eat. I'll do it anyway, and then you can have it or not, as you like. She stood up and placed her sewing on the table by the lamp. Sit down, he said, just for a minute, sit down. Oh, it wasn't until then that she began to get frightened. Go on, he said, sit down. She lowered herself onto the chair, watching him all the time with large, puzzled eyes. He had finished his second drink and was staring into the glass. Listen, he said, I've got something to tell you. What is it, darling? What's the matter? He became absolutely motionless, and he kept his head down. This is going to be a big shock to you, I'm afraid, he said. But I thought, it's a good, I thought about it a good deal, and I decided the only thing to do is to tell you immediately. And he told her. It didn't take long, four or five minutes at the most. And she sat still throughout it, watching him in puzzled horror. So there it is, he added. And I know it's a tough time to be telling you this. There simply wasn't any other way. Of course, I'll give you money and I'll see you're taken care of, but there really shouldn't be any problem. I hope not, in any case. It wouldn't be very good for my job. Her first instinct was not to believe any of it. She thought that perhaps he'd ima she'd imagined the whole thing. Perhaps if she acted as if though he had not, she'd not heard him, she would find out that none of it had ever happened. I'll fix some supper she whispered. Then she walked across the room. She couldn't feel her feet touching the floor. She couldn't feel anything except a slight sickness. She did everything without thinking. She went downstairs to the freezer, took hold of the first object she found. She lifted it out and looked at it. It was wrapped in paper. So she took the paper off the paper and looked at it again. A leg of lamb. All right, then we will have lamb for supper. She carried it upstairs held the thin end with both hands. She went into the living room, saw him standing by the window with his back to her and stopped. I've already told you, he said, don't make supper for me, I'm going out. At that point, Mary Maloney simply walked up behind him and without any pause, she swung the big frozen leg of lamb high in the air and brought it down as hard as she could on the back of his head. She might as well have hit him with a steel bar. She's hit him with a frozen leg of lamb. Is he dead? Is he not? Is he dead? What's happening? I mean, I think we can assume he's leaving her. Yeah, but why? I know, why? The mystery. Maybe he's just not a very nice person. But she's six months pregnant. So, Nefertiti puts out of our misery. When will we get to find out what happens? Well, I think we need to wait till next time. <sighs> next part! <laughs> I'll be back. Pew, 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 lands to the slaughter park too. <laughs> so now, now we've come to the section which is my favourite bit, and as um, it's Mrs. Wilshire's little baby. As Nightingale just described it as, it's my baby. Oh, sorry. Um, What's your name? Napoleon. 
Napoleon's little baby. Brilliant. Um, so I think it's really nice to have a section in the pod, particularly um, with all of the kind of negativity in the news at the moment. And it's really easy to feel really bogged down. We're locked down. We're not seeing people. We're quite distant from people. Is to have some we're good. Learning remotely. We're learning remote. We're learning uh, remotely. Um, it's good to have some feel-good news stories it that is. are happening this week um, that can kind of lift us up. And That's I felt right. like we're up today. <laughs> well. Are we? Uh, and I felt like. Is this live? Is it not? No, it's not live. I will. I would never be allowed to go out live. <laughs> um, so I felt like this week it had to be the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine going into the first patient. It happened yesterday, so it's still within the confines of this week. Um, his name is Brian Pinker. He's what eighty-two. A name. He's eighty-two, and he is the first person that has received the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID nineteen. So he must not be named vaccine um, and this is massive okay because this vaccine was developed by scientists at oxford university it's a british vaccine and normally vaccines can take up to five years to get to this point and so the fact that they have done this in 10 months is nothing short of amazing I, mean, I think I, it, i've got i've got complete and utter all for scientists anyway i know they're so clever aren't they they can so do really clever. clever things i mean anyone who can understand physics no, He's no, a complete genius. genius. And like chemical symbols. Like yeah, I, I, the periodic table. table mm. I just look at it and I'm like, I don't know what pH means. What is a pH? Somebody tell us. <laughs> Nobody knows. So this vaccine is a brilliant tool that we now have. It's something that we can fight, see who must not be named with. And um, the other part of pop positivity that I thought would be really good to talk about in the first week is I've just had my first COVID test. Your first COVID test? Yeah, and you have as well. I have as well. So all the staff today have been through the testing centre that the amazing... Oh yeah, and some students. That the amazing team have managed to set up in like less than 24 hours. It's crazy. I mean, Team Holyrood. I know, Team Holyrood. Amazing. And I will admit, I was a bit... Um, um, I was a bit anxious. anxious. There's that word. What's that word? Um, dubious. Uh, no, I kind of had there was that sort of anticipation. Yeah, dubious. Dubious. Um, a little bit, a little bit nervous. I mean, it's had a bad press. COVID tests about how horrible they are, and it's put a lot of people off. I think it's very unfair for the poor COVID tests. I mean, it's trying to do its job. I have to say, it was absolutely fine. Yeah. Tickle, tickle. My, my, I. I you were went, worried about your nose. I you? did. I went on the. Well, I've got a very sensitive top of my nose, so I went on the right nostril, and then my right eye just like started streaming. I mean, my, um, my, my. Um, I had uh, Mrs. Drews to um, as, as my um, COVID support buddy. I know, and they are—they're brilliant. And, they, yeah, and, she was and brilliant. we've done the training, haven't we? So we've also tra- we've done the training to be testers, and they're just doing an amazing job. And so, really positive first experience for me. And I know that um, all of our students are going to be experiencing yeah. it soon. And that's I just wanted to put it out there. Really positive experience. Yeah. It's a tick, and I'm negative, so that's very exciting. Yay. Got the text, sent it straight to my mum. So you know, she must do. be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Two really positive things: the AstraZeneca vaccine has gone into Brian. He's the. I mean, this is. Um, the thing is, I, I, I say I was apprehensive about getting a COVID test. I was also pretty peppy because I do feel like it's a historical moment, and you're part of history. We are. And so I am. The stats that are on the news now. I'm now part of those stats. Yeah. And that's quite are. exciting. I mean, they uh, never tell you the negative stats, so they just tell you how many positive cases we've got. Well, way to ruin it for me. Um, <laughs> I'm in a so data bank nice. somewhere and I've got the little card and I've kept it and I just feel like it's a historical thing and we're living through history right now. I have a scrapbook, so I should put that in my scrapbook. You absolutely should. I, I know I've said it and I know you will roll your eyes, but we really are living through a massive period of history that people will study. You can't hear me, listeners. You can't see me, listeners. You could just put a little eye roll. Yeah. <laughs> but it's absolutely true. We are living through a period of time that future history students are going to study. Mm. And I think that's quite exciting. So I'm keeping my I'm keeping my little card. That's fair. Don't you think it's ironic that we're both talking about our negative COVID re- results in our pod positivity section? Yeah. <laughs> but no, so two very positive things today. Something for the country and something for Team Holyrood as a community as well. So uh, amazing. And they, I took loads of pictures. I made the testers post for pictures. It's just, uh, I just can't believe that the sports hall's been turned into something so... You're such a history nerd. So organised and amazing. I'm telling you, I'm, we're going to look at those pictures one day and go, oh, do you remember? Do you remember 2020? Well, they're in 2021 now. No, I, I refused to add 2020 to my age. So, of course, 
this podcast is our way of connecting with you and it's your way of connecting with us while we can't be at school and we can't be together you can absolutely get in touch with us you can send us in shout outs you can do it through um our gaps emails so if you want to get hold of um nightingale aka miss wilshire you would email n wilshire and wilshire is spelled w-i-l-s-h-e-r at gaps.hollywoodacademy.com and the reason that I made Nightingale go first is because I couldn't quite remember mine so uh, if you wanted to email me that would be kwilshire at gaps.hollywoodacademy.com it feels like there's too many dots no uh, so you can get in touch with us either, either of those ways if you want to send a shout out to some of or your friends or you can send it to nwilshire at educ.somerset.gov.uk either or either or uh, but yeah, so we, we'd like to hear some shout outs. Uh, we'd like to hear some uh, fun facts. We'd like to hear how you're getting on with your remote learning. What yeah. have you learned this week? What have you done this week to, to make you feel proud? Um, so yeah, do get in touch with us. It's lovely to hear from you. And you, this pod, this pod is for you. For you guys. You wonderful team Hollywoods at home. So to connect you to each other, to connect you to us, to inspire you, to keep you going to fight the good fight or we will fight them on the beaches. <laughs> talking of Winston Churchill and talking of being inspirational, I have got lovely George in year seven. You have. To read us a positive inspirational quote for today and the quote is by Winston, Winston Churchill. Churchill. George. Ah. George, who coincidentally has the best English teacher in the world. And, Hashtag oh, just saying. No, and has the best music teacher in the world. Does he have Mrs. Seab? He does have Mrs. Seab. Oh, did it hurt you to say it that? It did hurt me to say that. <laughs> but no, no, it didn't, because we are a formidable team, Mrs. Seab, and has the best tutor in the world. He does have the second best tutor in the world. <clears throat> Everyone likes to write their own reviews. Anyway, George, take it away. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is courage to continue that counts. Oh, it's so nice to have students on the pod right from the word go. Like, it's been brilliant that you managed to go out and, and get George to do that. We're going to go over to um, Ruben now, who is going to tell us our joke of the pod. Joke of the pod! What do you call a pig that knows karate? I don't know. What do you call a pig that knows karate? A pork chop. So, one of my favourite sections now. Mm-hmm. Can I sing? Well, I put I put the sound in, like... Go for it. What have you done this week to make you feel proud? It's never it's too late to try. And this would be the point where we want you in future episodes. Podisodes? Podisodes, I think, is what we decided. Podisodes. Uh, this is the point where in future podisodes, we'd love to hear from you mm. about what you've done this week that's made you proud. And it doesn't have to be anything no? particularly enormous. I mean, if you have walked laps of your garden and raised £57 million pounds for the NHS. Marvellous. We'd love to hear about it. If you got up, got dressed, cleaned your teeth and did all your home learning, we want to hear about it as well. So, Nightingale, what have you done this week to make you feel proud? What have I done this week to make me feel proud? Do you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I had my very first COVID test. I know you've put that in your... Pod positivity. Pod positivity now. No, but you can be proud of it. But, you know, I, I was... I was Nervous about it, about, about sticking something I that far up my nose. Pulling off your own nose. I you? really was. I have a very sensitive nostril. 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 Called Nigel. <laughs> I have a very sensitive nostril. Anyway, um, but you're so. proud of the fact that you've done it. Yeah, amazing. So she says, I don't really like hospitals either. Or the dentist. Well, it wasn't in a hospital. It was in a sports hall. Yeah, but it's the NHS. So yeah, had my very first COVID test. One of what I expect will be many in the, in the coming weeks. So, Napoleon. What have we done this week to make you feel proud? Well, it may seem like nothing, but I'm particularly proud of it. I'm proud of the fact that I have essentially successfully taught on Google Classroom. Because at my old school, we didn't use Google Classroom. No, we didn't, did we? This is my first... That's been my first foray into the Google Classroom. And it sounds really cheesy... But I set my lessons and then I literally sat by my computer and waited for students to submit their work. (laughs) I've read every single piece of work my students have submitted and enjoyed it and responded and and probably, you know, filling up their (laughs) filling up their um, email boxes or wherever the comments go. But 
it just it, it, it it's really exciting to feel like it's worked and mm. to feel like and and a couple of times I've made a comment and then a student has said thank you back and it's it's probably as close as I'm going to get to an interaction with my students at the moment. No, one of my one of my year eight students actually just sent me a message that said thank you for the lesson today and it was just really nice. I'm proud of myself for being able to use Google Classroom, which may seem bananas. Well, I know I think that's very good. I, and I think a lot of our year sevens. Uh, maybe well, probably be staying the same. Yeah. Congratu well done. <laughs> Congratu well done to you. Yeah, so there you go. That's my that's my feeling of pride this week. So um so that wraps us up. That brings us to a close for our very first Hollywood happy hour. Do you H H H H um, we hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed making it. Uh, we hope you enjoy listening to it. We'd love to hear from you so if you want to get in touch. Um Miss Wilshire, who are you going to shout out to this week? Who are you shouting out? I, I like... think, do you know what? I think I can predict it. I think I can predict who you're going to shout out to. I don't know. I don't think you can. Okay. I would like to shout out to Mr. Tozer for being the first. Were you going to be Mr. Tozer? No, no, no. I thought you were. No, no, no. Go, yeah, Mr. Um, Tozer. Mr. Woo! Tozer for being the first Holly Rude Happy Hour correspondent. Nero. Nero. Not the coffee. Um. In the history of the Holly Rude Happy Hour podcast. Yeah, well so, done, Mr. Tozer. Do you know what? He didn't even. Didn't even flinch. I sent him an email saying, I have a proposition for you, and he just agreed. <laughs> so I think we could. What else can we get? Well, Mr. I Tozer started referring to it as our covert operation. Oh, uh, that's support, I mean, that's sound exciting. Um, George and Ruben um, both asked me what a covert operation was, and I couldn't actually explain well, it. Every, every moment is an opportunity to learn something new. Well, I'm then going to shout out to who I thought you were going to shout uh, out to, which is 7XM Marvelous, because oh, I thought yeah. that's who you would shout out no. to. No. Because I think well, of to start anyone, to they might be the ones that are listening, because they have you as a tutor and me as an English teacher. And let's be honest, so they're they probably, are marvellous. They're probably Wilshire fans. So for anyone in 7XM that's out there that's listening, hello. I could list them all off very, very quickly, but I think that would be a challenge that I would Oh, and there's a risk. There's a risk you'd miss someone and then everyone would be upset. So, I hello. I think I could do it. I think I could do it. Uh, so, hello 7XM who are out there and hello to all my English classes. I'm really missing you. I'm really missing not this seeing you. This is why I didn't say hello to them because now I miss them. I'm really missing not seeing you in person. I'm missing all my classes because mm. they are all absolutely wonderful. We miss you guys. We just miss you all. Yeah. So this is the best way that we can stay in touch with you for now. If you've got any contributions that you would like to put in, if there's something that you think we should be doing that we're not doing, if there's a subject we're not covering, because let's be honest, we're slightly biased, so you're going to get a lot of English and history and drama and music. So if you feel like maths is being underrepresented right now, get in touch and tell us what we can do. And of course, we will be talking to um, lots of your teachers and asking them to contribute things um, as we are virtual, we can virtually do that. But if you would like to send in some recordings, then please do. All you need to do is um, upload it to the GAPS email address that we've given you. So that is nwilshire at gaps.hollywoodacademy.com or kwilshire at gaps.hollywoodacademy.com. Um, and one of us will submit it. I mean, let's be honest, it's probably going to be Miss Wilshire because Mrs. Wilshire doesn't know how to edit it. Although I'll be very excited to read the message. And I think we should try and get a soundbite from Mr. McCormack as well at some point. We that should try and get him I think into we the pod. Could persuade him. Yeah, we need to find something to get him to do. Maybe a limerick. We could get him to do a limerick. There's the challenge. Challenge accepted. <laughs> On behalf of Mr. McCormack. So, uh, closing off the first of the Hollywood Happy Hour, you we you will be able to join us once a week whilst lockdown is happening. Keep yourselves safe. Keep, keep washing, washing your hands, hands and, and keep, keep tuning, tuning in to, to Hollywood Happy Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just call it the Triple H? Okay. And keep tuning in to the, the Triple H. H. <laughs> Thank you.